play and sing and do what they do. Let's give God a hand. today, let's look at Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. Thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ, your Son, who you gave to save us so that we may have a relationship with him, but more than that, we would have a relationship with you. We thank you for that. We thank you for the promise of your love continually. We thank you for all that you do for us. I pray, Father, that I would be surrounded now by the Holy Spirit. The heart would come alive in him and the words would be spoken by him. And may we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is the reason that we come to worship. If you come to worship anything or anybody else, it's wrong. Jesus is the reason that we're here. Jesus gave himself. We celebrate his life. We celebrate his death. We celebrate his resurrection and we celebrate his glory in heaven. Amen? amen. I don't want anybody to get too excited, so if you say amen, it'll be okay. We, we'll make it. 
But you know how you can kill a preacher? Just keep amen in him and he keep preaching. So people put amen in him. C.S. Lewis, who was a great theologian and writer, said this. I think it is one good reason to give thanks. For the Son of God became the man to enable man to become sons of God. I'm thankful that I am a son of God, not by anything that I have done, but by all that God has done in me and for me. We give thanks to Jesus Christ. We give thanks to Jesus Christ. We find that you can find this in Colossians. Colossians 1. We give thanks to Jesus Christ for who he is. First of all, Jesus is the promised one. Messiah, in Matthew 1, 22 and 23, it tells us that Jesus is that promised one that the prophets foretold years ago. And the prophet, when they prophesied, they prophesied the truth. You can trust any prophecy in the Bible to be true because it's from God. Give thanks, for he is the promised one, the Messiah. He is the only begotten Son. He came to reveal God in his love. When we see Jesus Christ, we see the God because Jesus is the invisible God. I mean, he's the visible God. When we see Jesus, we see God. And folks, I'm telling you, when you see Jesus, you see the fullness of God. The Bible says that in Colossians. The fullness of God given to Jesus Christ. He is the reason that we worship. Jesus is the gift. The gift of grace. For the penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is Jesus Christ for eternal life. Amen? Amen. I have I have eternal life, not by being so good, not for paying so much in my tithe all those years, not for anything, but by the grace of God we are saved. Jesus is a friend who laid down his life for us. No one took the life of Jesus. Jesus gave it up. Jesus gave his life. He laid it down. And now we are called his friends. Can you imagine? We are God's friends. Not only are we the sons of God, but we are also friends of God. There is no better friend than that, is there? I've had friends for the, you know, I told you I saw that one friend of mine. And we haven't seen each other for 40 years, but at the convention we got to see each other, talk to each other. But there's nothing like the friendship that I have with God. He sticks closer than a brother. <coughs> everything that I have, everything that I am, everything I do is because of who he is. Jesus Christ is a creator and a recreator. He was there at the beginning. Verses 1, 15 through 17 talks about Jesus in Colossians. And we need to understand, folks, that when we have Jesus, we have all we need. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And now he is recreating us. Before, he, before we were even existing, he created all things, and in him he holds all things together. I'm so thankful. In this chaotic world we have, we need somebody to hold it together. And that somebody is God. No man can hold this world together. And no man can destroy it unless God allows it. Because it belongs to him. And then Jesus came, died for my sins and your sins, <laughs> And he creates us. We have a new life. 
We're not what we used to be. We are new. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Amen? We are something new. We are God's child. Thankfully, that he's not done with me yet. He's a potter. I'm the clay. I break. And he puts me back together. I fade a little bit. And he puts me back together. He's a creator. He's a recreator. He's recreating me every day. Giving me special things. Blessings that we cannot describe. Another thing he has done. He has reconciled us to God. Sin has separated us from God. Now, through Jesus Christ, we have a personal, intimate relationship with the Father. Through the Holy Spirit, we can call the Father a Abba Father. Amen? That's a personal God. He's personal to us. He's not some far-off, bearded old man looking for somebody to swat. He's a God that lives in me through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit and you. If you have Jesus Christ, he lives in you. He has given us the privilege to be called children of God. John 1 12 says that we have that privilege because of Jesus Christ to be called children of God. I hear people talk about children of God all the time. But I'm telling you, there's a close, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ that gives us the privilege to be called God's children. And I want everything good for my children. They don't see everything I'm doing behind to help them. And I don't see everything what God's doing, but I know he's there, and I know that he will bless me more than I could ever imagine. Because... He is there. And Jesus also now sits at the right hand of God the Father, mediating for us. But I think one of the great things is he's interceding on our behalf. He's praying for us. It's important for each of us to pray for each other, right? And we pray for our church members. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for all people. But could you imagine the prayers that Jesus is praying for you? I can't even imagine. And when God looks at us, he looks at us through the blood of Jesus and sees us as perfect, holy, blameless. Not because of who we are, but it's that personal relationship that we have with Jesus. It gives us all this we have. He has provided security for us. In John 10, 28, 29, it says, God has me in one hand, Jesus has me in the other hand. No one can snatch me out of their hand. I am saved today, tomorrow, and forever. There is no losing my salvation. I am secure in him. What God has given to Jesus, he will never cast away. He will hold it. Jesus promised his Holy Spirit and he sent it. Give thanks for what God has promised. He promised the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to be leaving, but I'm going to send you another comforter. I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you a counselor. I'm going to send you a guide. I'm going to send you a sustainer. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to counsel with you, to help you, and sustain you through this life. Folks, we could not live as a Christian life in this world without the Holy Spirit. Satan would crush us. But with the Holy Spirit, we have power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. He's promised us eternal life. He's promised us that he would come and receive us unto himself. 
John 14, 1 through 3, it says, Don't be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and if I would not have told you, if I told you that, I will come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Praise God. And as happens, as we read 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, that the trumpets are going to sound, there's going to be a voice of the archangel, and Jesus is going to come and receive his bride unto himself and take it up with him. The dead in Christ will rise first. <laughs> Can you imagine what the people, when they see the dead in Christ rising, and then they see us gone, and we're, we're with Jesus, and it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed and we will be like him. Folks, we will never be Jesus, but we will be like him. We have a new body. We'll have a new outfit. It'll be white. But we won't be angels. We will be people. We will be walking the streets of gold. We will be drinking from the fountain of life. We will live with him. And he promised eternal life. The thief comes to destroy, John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to destroy. Jesus came to give life <laughs> abundantly and everlasting. Amen? Amen. He has promised us the Holy Spirit to take us and seal us for the time we're here on this earth till the time we reach heaven. We are sealed. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Never to be let go. Jesus promised he would be with us always. He's with us right now. He's with all the hunters out there. He's with all the people who are traveling. And he's with us right here. He is here in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit dealing with our lives, dealing with our hearts. I'm thankful that wherever I go, I know that I've got God on my side. When I was laying there the other day, the worst part about the surgery was the deadening. And they take that needle, it's about that long, and they stick it down into your nose, and you, you can, he says, it's going to sting. Ha, oh, sting. He doesn't know what sting is. But then he pulled it out, and I could feel him pushing and pressing, and he said, close your eyes. And I did, and I thought, oh, God, help me. <laughs> and he said, it's okay, I'm here. He really did. Not an audible, not an audible voice, but he said, I'm with you. We'll make it. Doesn't it make you feel good to know that you're not walking in this world by yourself? You have somebody that's with you and his name is Jesus and it's God's presence through the Holy Spirit walking with you, talking with you, helping you along the way. He promised that he would be with us always even to the ends of the earth. These reasons Jesus has done for us. Jesus, who is our Father and Son. Jesus, who is our Savior. Jesus, who is still working on us. I need a lot of work I've done on me. He had the old children's song back years ago. He's still working on me. And I want him to continue to work on me. Never quit working on me. You're never too old to be taken care of by God. You're never too old to find something new in your life and be renewed. These should be enough to give us an attitude of gratitude as we live our life. An attitude of saying, thank you, 
God, for everything. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. I'm still counting my blessings every day, five blessings every day, trying to figure out how God is working in my life and blessing me so many ways. But he is. And it helps us to live with an attitude of gratitude, but it also helps us to serve him with gladness. Serving God did not make you tired and weary. Serving God gives you rest. He's your resting place. You may get tired and weary in this world, but I want to tell you something. You never get tired of serving the Lord. Just like we're doing food baskets. Oh, it's weary work. But it's because we love the Lord Jesus Christ that we want to help others. And it helps us to help them. And that's serving him with gladness. Giving him our all. Because he has given us all. Give thanks to God for Jesus. Every day you ought to get up and say thank you for Jesus. And thank you Jesus for letting me get up. My cat knows when I need to get up. This morning, I slept in a half hour because I knew Judy wasn't coming. My cat woke me up the half hour before. He said, you're supposed to be up. What is this? And I woke up, said, thank you, Jesus. Said, I have an alarm clock that lives. And comes and sees me, comes and gets me. Thank you for life. Folks, I am so thankful for life. As I was telling somebody to see the doctor, Dr. Quinlan, the other day, he said, Bob, you're in pretty good shape for the age you are. Said, oh, thanks. My blood pressure was down to 120 over 80. It hasn't hit that since I was, I don't know when. But he said he could uh, get a little smaller. But he said, I'm not going to tell you that. You've been living that way for a long time. I said, yeah. I said, I don't remember weighing under 200 pounds. I think I was born weighing 200 pounds. He said, well, I don't know about that. But in high school, I was 200 pounds. In the Army, I was 215 pounds. I don't remember weighing that. But I've been able to do what I do because the Lord God is with me and taking me through it. What's he done for you? What's he doing for you right now? Give thanks for whatever he's doing in your life. I know Ronnie and Vicky are happy to have their kids right here now instead of having to travel a long way. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. And you have a blessing when you can see them and you can enjoy them. It's a blessing of God's grace that we're saved. I can't be good enough to get to heaven. You can't be. You don't have a way to earn your way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. He is, by grace, your Savior, and he will take you home. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus and showing that you love him by living for him. By smiling once in a while. By giving him blessings through us as we bless others. Give thanks in everything. Because everything we have has come from God. Our blessings flow from heaven from a Father of lights. And when we pray and our praises go up, blessings come down. Let God take care of you today, tomorrow, every day. May you experience a wonderful presence of God today, some special way. Let him know that she's thankful by living for him. In 
showing your love for him by showing your love for others. That means even your enemies. Even those who don't love you, you can learn how to love them. Thank you for being here this morning. And if you've never met Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to sing a hymn, and I will help you to find Jesus in a way that you will know that you are loved and forgiven and you have eternal life. Let's stand as we sing a hymn of invitation.